Rob, did, did you always plan to go public? Is this opportunistic or is this something that was always in the grand plan? I mean, it truly, you know, ground mobility has uh, totally been transformed uh, by battery technology and software. Uh, and you can see it by the SPACs that you're talking about in terms of uh, everything from uh, ground charging stations across networks uh, and actually electric vehicles themselves. Uh, they've transformed ground mobility and the next battle is clearly in the air uh, and it's, there's never been an opportunity to invest in something specifically geared towards this. We've been building infrastructure uh, and technology from consumer to cockpit over the past six years, a customer experience, a trusted brand, 200,000 flyers. We've done it under, under an asset light model, using conventional helicopters so that at some point, uh, some people say 2022 or 2023, our models 2025, we'll be able to use this entire stack to swap out helicopters for what we call eVTOL, electric vertical takeoff or landing aircraft that are both, you know, admit no carbons, uh, are quiet, uh, and more cost effective. All right, so talk a little bit more about that asset model. Of course, you know, uh, Caroline and I, we get the uh, company official Sikorsky into work uh, every morning, so our, our, our Eco blueprint is a little bit uh, worse than that. I am curious as to whether um, the structure of this business is dependent on keeping, I guess, the asset light model or whether maybe you do get to a point where you feel it might be more beneficial to have uh, a little bit more asset control. Uh, I don't think that's necessary. Uh, and in fact, one of the, the best ways of looking at uh, Blade is that, you know, we are in, uh, in a way an index play on eVTEL. So you have manufacturers pouring billions of dollars into individual aircraft. We don't know who the winner is going to be. This allows us to pick the right equipment for the mission, whether it be a short mission. We do a lot of organ movements. We're the largest mover of organs in the Northeast with blade metamobility. We have long distance missions. So even right now, we use a variety of different types of helicopters depending on what the proper mission is. And with respect to eVTOL, we'll be able to help pick and choose what makes sense for us and be able to, you know, once the winners have been identified, use them and not be stuck with one particular type of aircraft. If we went asset heavy, not only would reduce our, <clears throat> our return on assets, but it would reduce our overall flexibility. So with all this in mind, Rob, what are you expecting for your business going forward into 2021 with a vaccine rolling out? And how have you seen a change over the course of the pandemic, especially in regard to your clientele? Well, uh, not unlike many other businesses, the pandemic's impacted us in ways that we really did not expect. Uh, and in fact, in October, our revenues uh, and number of flights are up versus October last year uh, before the pandemic. People have actually created, and uh, uh, Bloomberg actually wrote this in, uh, in online, synthetic suburbs. They're taking homes that may have been secondary homes that are no co-primary co homes that could be up to 90 miles away. Uh, and they are commuting maybe once a week, once a week for two nights, every other week. Uh, as opposed to every single day, but it's really enabling them to live outside the normal sphere of where they of uh, where they where they used to live in the city. Uh, and what's been interesting about that is uh, that it has improved our economics because they're no longer kind of flying out on a weekend uh, where the actual helicopter is to go empty or flying back on a Sunday. We're filled in both directions and we're flying seven days a week, albeit probably not at the volume we had before. Uh, additionally, our, our forecast did not, for, uh, did not assume any type of vaccine, which clearly uh, is uh, not only coming, but we believe there's a lot of pent up demand uh, for travel and there are a lot of people want to get back to work. Well, we've got one minute. The exact first use case of the funds you're currently raising? Uh, it, it, you know, the terms of the funds that we're raising, uh, the, the SPAC that we're merging into is $275 million in terms of cash and trust. Uh, and we raised a pipe of committed common capital of $125 million from terrific investors like H.G. Vora, uh, and Hedosphia, uh, David Geffen, uh, Barry Diller, and David Zaslav, uh, certain uh, original investors, uh, which is committed capital. Uh, this will go to purchase infrastructure, such as heliports, landing zones, that can yeah. not only be used today, where we can enjoy better economics, but also can be used for eVTOL in the future, and using legacy uh, aviation metrics. So yeah. it's a great way for us to bulk up, improve our business today, but also prepare for eVTOL tomorrow.